Hello my friends, today we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and uh, all kinds of DNA related stuff of a bell beaker individual from Bronze Age England. This bell beaker individual's uh, Y DNA is R1B, DF13. I don't know where DF13 subclade is most common, but it's R1B and his mitochondrial DNA seems to be K1A. All right, so let's get on to his phenotype, what he looked like. According to Nashakot, this individual, this Belbiker guy, had either green or hazel eyes. It looks like green or hazel hair. Uh, maybe even light brown eyes because there's 23.5% likelihood of that. But probably not blue eyes, probably not dark brown eyes. Uh, it's probably some kind of hazel or greenish uh, eye tone. In regards to his hair color, he's predicted to have the highest, uh, the highest likelihood hair is black hair, but there is also a significant likelihood of brown or dark blonde hair, uh, although chances are most likely it's black. And for skin color, his predicted skin color is that he has intermediate or olive skin tone. So uh, by the standards of Northern Europeans, this is quite a dark guy by the standards of Mediterranean people, probably just about average by the standards of people outside of Europe, a very light person. This is his predicted eye color here with the uh, web, web version of Nashakot. In terms of the phenotype, what he might have looked like, uh, maybe he might have looked like this character in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul series called Walter White. That's right. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores. And his polygenic risk scores are as such. It seems that he has very low odds of schizophrenia. Uh, he's got slightly below average odds of type 2 diabetes. And he's got, it looks like, above average. Actually, two times above average odds for Alzheimer's. By the way, Alzheimer's is fairly common. Around 10% of the elders worldwide develop Alzheimer's. Which means that having a 2.14 times the average odds of Alzheimer's risks makes you have 21.5% the risk of Alzheimer's, which is kind of incredible. It's very high, in my opinion. Um, this individual has a gene comes Valmet variation, meaning Valmet genotype, so intermediate between warrior and warrior. However, he is a warrior in MAOA, so overall he's definitely more warrior than warrior. Um, in regards to 5-HTTLPR, this individual has short form 5-HTTLPR, just like most of you guys. He's got slightly higher odds of depression uh, but that's typical. Uh, that's a very typical genotype. Very few people have long form 5 htlpr like me, for example. Um, but very few people do. This individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Does not carry either one of the two European lactose persistence mutations. I should specify for OXTR. He's not genotyped for the main variation in OXTR that has to do with empathy. But if you look at his other genotypes, it looks like he's got intermediate or heterozygous genotype. He probably is heterozygous for this variation as well. Um, he does not have type 1 diabetes, good for him, and he is not a carrier of the C282Y hemochromatosis mutations, does not have the Celtic curves. Alright, he is uh, not a carrier of the APOE2 alleles in APOE, very good for him, however, he's got some genotypes that increase the odds of Alzheimer's, such as these two. He has the G, he's, um, the GLU is present in him. Uh, in this variation, which leads to lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight. This is a very stereotypical European genotype to have uh, that greatly reduces the risk of myopia and improves eyesight. Uh, what's interesting, once again, or maybe is it is it is it once again? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Have I already made a video of this? It's like deja vu. But yeah, he carries micro P mutation. That's kind of crazy. That's really crazy. How does he? Okay, well, I think that it's a, um, uh, the micro P mutation is, is recessive, isn't it? So you gotta have two to actually have the phenotype. So he probably didn't have micro P in reality, but uh, he was a carrier for this mutation. Very interesting. Uh, mis mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Good. Uh, Two fat gene variants in FCOs, RS9939609, very interesting. So, this individual is very overweight. Oh, wow. No, I, you know what I just realized? I just realized that the micro P thing was a different person. 
I, because I was just making a video about somebody else and they also had it. And I just realized it was a different person. Wow, so uh, today, I've seen, just today, I've seen two people who both had, two different people who both had this micro P mutation. That's kind of crazy. All right. And uh, this individual does not have any East Asian EDR variants. Good for him. And this individual is less likely to gain weight if taken Zyprexa. Good for him. Uh, not a carrier of any of the albinism mutations. And also not a carrier of any of the familiar Mediterranean fever mutations. All right. For the MTHFR panel, this individual seems to have good healthy genotype. Ah, good healthy genotype in MTHFR and a common genotype in this variation of ATHFR that's uh, typically implicated in slightly higher than average blood pressure. All right, now we're gonna look at his OCA2 blown hair, blue eyes panel. This might be interesting uh, because from my understanding, he, from my remember, the way I remember it, he scored green and hazel. So he has blue eye haplotype two, he has blue eye haplotype one, um, he has this genotype, which is predictive of blue eye haplotype one, okay. And he has TT here, which is also predictive of blue eye haplotype 2, okay. However, he has GG here. All right, so this is part of the thing that contributed to him scoring green and hazel eyes instead of blue. And he's heterozygous in blue eye haplotype 3, interesting. And he's somehow heterozygous in blue eye haplotype 4. So I'm thinking based on the fact that he's heterozygous in blue eye haplotype 4, there's other stuff in his file. Uh, that's not shown up here on the screen, but that I never made show up on the screen. Uh, but that does, that does play a role in the calculation. <laughs> or maybe it's his genotype in SLC 45A2 that contributed to his result. We can check that now, actually. Let's just, let's see what he scores for the OCA2 and HERC2 eye, col eye color calculator. Okay, yeah, so for that, he's scoring mostly blue and green eyes. Yeah, so um, most of the difference then is because of SLC 45A2 and SLC 24A4 genotype. Yeah, most of the difference in the prediction is because of uh, SLC, probably SLC 45A2 gene. That's what I'm thinking. So we can kind of assume that he probably has, yeah, and he's predicted to have intermediate or darker skin. Yeah, so that's it's definitely because of the SLC 45A2 gene that he's scoring the way he is. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and check his ethnic calculator results. All right, let's go ahead and check. So this was done with 493 SNPs. And let's check who he's closest to. He is closest to Ashkenazi Jews. Followed by that is Bell Beakers from Britain. Followed by that is Corded Ware people, uh, Giva Karai, which is from Lithuania. So it looks like he's closest to uh, various Europeans. But Ashkenazi Jews are a little bit closer to him than are Bell Beakers from Britain, which is very interesting. Let's go ahead and check his four-way population mixture. He's getting modeled here as a mixture of Bell Beaker plus Egyptian mummy plus Ukrainian plus Syrian Arab. So yeah, you see, it looks like relative to the Bell Beakers, there is a shift towards Mediterraneans in this individual. And probably because of that, he was closest to Ashkenazi Jews because of this Mediterranean shift. Uh, with the five-way oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Azerbaijan, Neolithic, Ukrainian, and some kind of really crazy, really crazy stuff. What about Freeway Oracle? With the Freeway Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Bell Beaker from Britain, a little bit of French, and once again, a little bit of this Egyptian mummy. So it looks like, once again, relative to what's typical for the other Bell Beakers with my calculator, uh, this individual is a little bit shifted towards uh, like Mediterranean re region, like French people and uh, Egyptian mummies. All right, what about, what if we reduce the distance column to 0 0.5? We're going to see this. He is getting modeled as a mixture of half Bell Beaker from Britain plus a quarter Egyptian Ptolemaic mummy uh, plus one quarter this, this sample from Lithuania, from mid uh, medieval Lithuania. All right, what if we reduce it to uh, five and we keep the distance column? Same thing. All right, so it looks like this individual is a little bit Mediterranean shifted with my calculator. Uh, if you want to find out whether he is in reality, you can, of course, fi find him on Explore Your DNA and uh, look at the G25 for it. But I don't really I don't really care for that. What's the point? You can do it yourself. Uh, thanks for watching until the end. I'm saying you can download 
this file into one to three and me formats from link which is in the description of the video and uh, goodbye thanks for watching